Okay, so now we're going to move on to some of the different graphs um, that we can create within uh, the ggplot package. Um, so far, we've been concentrating on these scatter plots, um, but there's a lot more versatility to the ggplot package. And so now we're going to introduce some of those other um, uh, chart uh, plot types that we can create. Okay, so we're going to create a new section header. We'll call this one box plot. Okay, and as I mentioned, um, all of these ggplot functions are going to have a similar structure. Okay, really where we're going to start getting uh, some differences here are in these geometric functions at this last line. So rather than geom point, now we're going to just replace this with geom box plot. Okay. We're also going to want to use some different variables, okay, because a, a box plot um, is going to, uh, you know, require, it's, it's going to be ideal for mapping different kinds of variables. Um, compared to the scatter plot. So we're going to want to go ahead and switch out um, these X and Y values for more appropriate variables. So what we're going to use for the X is respondent wall type. And then for our Y value, we're going to use rooms. Okay, so respondent wall type is a categorical variable. Rooms is a, a quantitative uh, variable, just giving it a number. Okay, and that creates our box plot over here. Okay, so on the x-axis, we have the four different levels of that variable, uh, burnt brick, cement, mud daub, and sun bricks. Um, and then the rooms will tell you basically the number of rooms in that household. This provide some insight into maybe some of the limitations for these different construction materials. So for instance, um, you kind of have a bit more, seem to have more uh, versatility um, in the number of rooms that you include in your house if you're building with burnt bricks as compared to something like cement. Um, it seems like cement, there's uh, not a whole lot of uh, variability in the houses. Um, again, this is just correlation, so there, there, this might just be kind of choice or coincidence, um, but it does give you some insight into the relationship between those uh, building materials and the number of rooms. You can also combine different graph types, one on top of the other. Okay, so in this case, we're going to borrow our code block from above. Then we're going to add one more plus sign and add another geometric function down here. Um, let's use our jitter plot example from above. Just to save time, we'll go ahead and copy all of these arguments from our previous example. Make that extra parentheses. And what we have now is this kind of superimposition of the scatter plot on top of our box plot. Okay, so this gives you an idea of both, both of the uh, kind of concentration of those values as well as kind of the range within that interquartile uh, range here. Okay, just to give you a few more examples of the types of graphs that you can make within ggplot, we could replace box plot with violin. This will create a violin plot. This kind of tells you, uh, again, uh, a little bit more detail about where those values are um, across its range. So whereas the box plot um, just kind of shows you uh, uniformly um, the, the range that are falling within different quartile values, um, the violin plot is going to tell you kind of density um, even within those different ranges. And of course, you can superimpose the jitter plot on top of that as well. So a lot of options here. 